Hey everyone, Christine Pedersen here to talk about the four month sleep regression. I get asked about regressions a lot. And generally speaking, the four month sleep regression is actually a progression. So when we're talking about regressions in general, we're talking about children who had skills that they're no longer able to access. That's a regression. So we talk about potty regressions and sleep regressions, especially with toddlers related to fears or separation anxiety. Oftentimes there are regressions or an inability to go back to the skills that they had before. And that is a regression. But the four month sleep progression is problematic because it's a developmental milestone in a newborn's brain that makes it challenging for them to get the sleep that they have been getting thus far. So many parents tell me that up until four months, they had a great sleeper. What is happening? Let's talk a little bit about a newborn's brain. They're typically only getting two sleep stages really deep slow wave sleep and REM sleep. And they bounce between those two sleep stages consistently. So this is why a baby will drop into sleep and go very quickly into a deep stage sleep where you can pick up their arm and let it fall. They are not going to wake up. Whether you're transferring them from the car or whether you're wearing them and moving around the house or whether they're sleeping on the, they fell asleep on the floor, on their activity mat, right? And then there's the REM sleep where you can see the eyes moving around, um, getting that REM sleep that they need. These are the two most essential sleep stages for many humans. But so babies are born with them and that's really all that they have until four months when they develop the other two sleep stages. So sleep stage one, where they're going into unconsciousness, is the drowsy state. So they can still hear and their eyes are probably closed, but they can use their other senses, right? They can feel, touch, and respond to it. They can hear sound and respond to it. So it's easy for them to get woken up out of that drowsy state as they're going into unconsciousness, which is stage two. Stage two sleep is also easy to wake kiddos out of. And once they do this cycle, right, drowsiness, stage one, stage two, almost into that deep, slow wave sleep, and then stage three, and then REM sleep, they cross over again into another cycle. But in that crossover, oftentimes kiddos will wake up. So we're, we're looking at 20, 30, 45 minutes where kiddos are waking up between sleep cycles because movement, light, sound, or something is alerting them in those lighter stages of sleep. This is actually the sleep cycle that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. So in a way, it's really, really cool that they're developing this at this point, but it can make it really difficult for parents who have been getting a lot of naps on the go or a lot of naps in carriers or a lot of naps just in the middle of the day where baby will fall asleep anywhere conveniently and get the rest that they need. At the four month sleep mark, many parents actually need to shift their focus so that they can help baby get the sleep they need during the day. So I recommend several things. One is making sure that baby's sleep environment is really optimal for limiting distractions or disruptions to sleep. A dark, dark room, a white noise to block the sound of pets or traffic or the mailman digging the doorbell or something like that. And then I also like to focus on so we have environment on one hand and then independent sleep skills on the other. And I call these nap opportunities. Opportunities for your child to take a nap independently so that they're falling asleep independently. And when they go to link into that next sleep cycle, they are in that same independent zone in their cozy sleep space. They feel confident and empowered to just link right back into that sleep cycle and get the slow wave and the REM sleep that they need. So they're linking and linking those sleep cycles because they went to sleep 
independently in the first place. So if your kiddo has some pretty ingrained sleep and so associations like contact napping on you or feeding, rocking, bouncing, padding to sleep, it's going to make it really hard for them once you put them down in their crib after getting them to sleep, put them down in the bassinet or the crib. They go through their sleep cycle and they come into that alert state and they wake up and wonder, where are my people? I need help to go into sleep. So they call you back in and you do the pacifier and you do the padding and the rocking, the bouncing all over again, get them back to sleep. And then 20 minutes later, they're waking up again. So oftentimes this leads to a lot of frustration, not just for parents, but also for babies. Parents around the four month mark notice more fussiness, more overtiredness. So it's way more difficult to get kiddos to go to sleep the next time we lay them down. So start working on those independent sleep skills or nap opportunities in the early part of the day and right at bedtime. Those are the two times that I find parents are most successful at getting kiddos to fall asleep independently in their own cozy sleep space. And then they can continue leaking those sleep cycles and building this new pathway to feeling more confident in their independent sleep habits. This is a lot of information. I have an article that walks us through all of this step by step. If you want to check it out, please do that. In the meantime, know that this is totally normal and actually a really good thing. Three month sleep progression happens with all babies and they can all learn how to sleep independently in their cozy sleep space with some gentle nap opportunities to help them think, oh yeah, I can do this. This place does feel comfortable and cozy and safe for me. And I can go to sleep here, I can stay asleep, and then I can link those sleep cycles. If you're worried about your kiddo being able to do this, or you've got a six, seven, eight month old who struggled in the four month sleep regression and still has some really strong sleep associations because of that, please reach out. So let me know in the comments or reach out to me via email if you've got a concern about a sleeper where their struggle started at the four month sleep regression. They just need to feel empowered to sleep independently. And if you're a newborn parent wanting to head off the four month sleep regression, I recommend starting around two to three months working on those nap opportunities. And my newborn sleep guide can help you to begin laying a foundation for independent sleep really gently. All right, I'm signing off. Again, reach out if you have questions about the four month sleep progression.